Hi guys, how are you? I hope everything is fine. I'm fine too, but I'm freezing because I'm at Rizia Pass. That's the border with Austria. I'm at 5000 feet above sea level. This is the beginning of the Venosta Valley. I'm about to start the longest trip I've ever made by bike. From the source of the river Adige, which is right above here, to the mouth of the river. 280 miles by bike from Austria to the Adriatic Sea. Stay with me because we're going to see some serious stuff. Now I go because I need to warm up. So here I go, from the snowy landscapes of Trentino Alto Adige through the cities of Bolzano and Trento, along the banks of the river Adige, Til Verona and the Venetian Plain, to the Adriatic Sea, always staring at beautiful views, discovering a lot of interesting things that you can admire on this trip that I'm sure will inspire your next trip. But step by step, I explain you everything. Let's start from the Italian border and the beautiful landscapes of Lake Resia. Lake Resia is artificial. Until the 1940s there were three natural lakes. Lake Resia, Lake Curon and Lake San Valentino alla Muta. Then the building of a dam caused the waters of two lakes merge into a single artificial lake this one you see today, which submerged completely the village of Curon Venosta. Nowadays the very popular bell tower emerging from the lake reminds us where the village stood in the past. And so I keep on traveling along the well-marked bike path in this polar landscape, along the shores of the frozen lakes to the beautiful village of Burgusio, known for its prince's castle and the abbey of Mount Mary, the highest Benedictine monastery in Europe, one of the most important in the Tyrol. Wow! So great this downhill! The Adige is a cocky stream in the mountains, and I ride at high speed through this great valley down to Glorenza, with its beautiful medieval walls and the traditional look of southern Tyrol. And, above all, with its beautiful arcades, the smallest I've ever seen. Okay, they're beautiful, but so small. Allora, ragazzi, intanto qualche So, guys, few information about the bike path. It's always well marked, very well, so you will have no problems finding the way. There is always the railway running by the bike path from Malles to Verona, so every here and there you'll find a train station and take a train if you are tired, if you have problems with your bike, if you want to go back. After Verona to the Adriatic Sea, the railway is not always close to the bike path, but sometimes they cross, so no problems also there. From Malles to the Austrian border, if you want to begin from Austria like I did, there is a bus that can carry a small amount of bikes. In the description of the video you find their website for more info. Another tip, always check the weather forecast before you leave and the situation of the bike path. Now it's late February, there is no snow on the path as you can see, but around the frozen lakes I found a bit of ice on the tarmac. So, first it was dangerous, and second, a waste of time, because I had to carry my bike with all my stuff by hand, so always take information. Oh, 
arrivato adesso a me. I just arrived in Merano. So, the bike path continues that way, towards Bolzano. But I'm staying here for the night because tomorrow morning I want to visit Merano. Because the city is very beautiful. See you later. How good is to take a shower after a day like this? Hmm? I got few things to do, you see, download the clips, uh, charge the batteries, so I have some work to do. We'll see tomorrow to take a tour of Merano. And here I am, sunbathing, finally warmer temperatures than yesterday. I'm on the bank of the river Passirio, let's go have a tour of Merano, because the city is very beautiful. It was a tourist destination in the 19th century when this was the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. Among its guests uh, the Empress Sissi, Franz Kafka, just to name a few. Merano is very beautiful because it's very well preserved. It was spared from the bombing of the World War II because here the injured soldiers were taken to be nursed. In fact, in 1944 Merano was declared a hospital town. So let's have a tour. The architecture of Merano is simply stunning. From the Art Nouveau buildings in the old town to the city's most representative buildings, such as the Kurhaus, a great exhibition space for international events, and also a theater, one of the most beautiful buildings in Europe, located on the riverside, still asleep in these cold winter days. Very beautiful also the Roman bridge, which stays under the Tappener promenade, that gives a splendid view of the old town of Merano from above. The promenade is dedicated to Franz Tappener, one of the founders of the historic Forst Brewery in Merano. Behind me a very interesting venture, the Museum of Women, which uses books, uh, documents, uh, clothes and everyday objects to explain the role of women in the Western society over the last 200 years. This is also a place for meetings and culture. There is an important library and this one in Merano is the headquarter of a network of international museums dedicated to women. Very nice, bravo, but now we go to Bolzano. From a cocky stream the Adige has become a river and I follow it at high speed down to Bolzano. Here I am in Bolzano, you see the city behind me. The bike path continues that way, I want to go up to Lake Caldaro and from there towards the city of Ora and Trento. I have already covered about 18 miles, I have another 32 to ride, so I need to go fast, but first I have a tip for you. If you have time, you can go left to the city of Bolzano, it's worth a visit. I did it few years ago, during Christmas time, it's absolutely beautiful. You find the link to that video in the description of this video. But now I go, otherwise I will never get to the sea. I climbed the hills in the outskirts of Bolzano through tunnels and woods, just right before I relieving downhill to Lake Caldaro. I reached the shores of the lake at the speed of light, but I have to stop because of a running race around the lake. The place looks really nice and I would love to show you, but unfortunately all access to the lake is private so I can just take few clips from above. Really warm, very nice, best time to stop and take a break. Here you can see a beachy grill, it's like the rest areas you find along a highway, but of course on a bike path, so a place where you can stop and rest, eat something, drink something, and find assistance in case of problems with your bike. This venture was born here in Trentino, but it's spreading very quickly throughout Italy.
back in the saddle, next stop Trento. A very short and interesting detour from the bike path at San Michele all'Adige takes you to Italy's most important ethnographic museum, a place where to discover the roots of Trentino region through an interesting exhibition of objects related to agriculture, work machineries, the mountains, religion, music, everyday life. In short, an opportunity for a cultural break. And up there it is, the Dos Trento, with the silhouette of the mausoleum of Cesare Battisti, welcoming me to Trentino's capital city. I just arrived at the hostel, now I'm going to take a shower and then I want to go out and take a tour of Trento with the last moments of light of the day and then go have dinner. No, it's already dark. Let's find a place where to eat something. Actually, I already visited Trento a few years ago. Really beautiful, I leave the link to the video in the description below. So now I focus on food to recuperate the energies. A huge pork hock with potatoes and sauerkraut and then straight to bed because tomorrow I want to ride a lot of miles. And here I am, after a huge pork hock, a deep sleep, of course. So ready for another day traveling towards the Adriatic Sea. Today I want to do a lot of miles, about uh, 60, I want to get to Verona. It's very early, quite cold, ready to go, but first I want to tell you something. It's almost complete the connection from the Adige bike path to Valsugana and the River Brenta bike path that runs from Pergine Valsugana to Bassano del Grappa, very beautiful. I did it last year, you find the link to that video in the description below. This means bike culture is spreading in Italy and in 2023 it will be possible to travel a lot more by bike. Excellent! Now Verona! The valley between Trento and Verona is known as Vallagarina, a land of important vineyards but also a land of castles and fortresses such as Castel Beseno, up there on that hill, the largest fortress in Trentino. Due to its strategic position across the centuries, the site of several battles. A few miles south, in the municipality of Avio, there is the Sabbionara castle, one of the best known and oldest fortified castles in Trentino, for years owned by the Castelbarco family and in 1977 donated to the FAI, the fund for the Italian environment, that manages it and takes care of the visits. I'm basically inside the river, look how low the level is. It hasn't rained for about three months in northern Italy. The sun feels like spring and we're still in winter. And it's impossible to omit the sanctuary of Madonna della Corona, hidden in the mountains overlooking the Vallagarina. Actually, more than a sanctuary overlooking the valley, I would say a sanctuary carved into the mountain, because one of the walls of the church is actually the slope of the mountain, a fantastic place where I had the chance to shoot some unforgettable images. What do you think? Through countless vineyards and small villages, I get to the final part of the valley, in the land of the fortresses, that bears witness to the past of this area as the border between Italy and the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. One of them is the fortress of Rivoli, 
in a scenic position right at the end of the valley, saying goodbye to the Alps and welcoming me to the Venetian plain. It's almost the sunset and I begin to feel tired. With the last lights of the day I enter Bussolengo and head straight to Verona, where I arrive in the evening. Whoa. Finally in Verona! Guys, I'm exhausted! It's already dark! 63 miles and a half! I've never done anything like this before! So, there's nothing left to say, this video ends here! See you for the second part of the journey from Verona to the Adriatic Sea, that you will see soon here below! I also recommend you to visit Verona if you pass by and have the time to do it, because it's one of the most beautiful cities in Italy. I did, of course, last year, and below you find the link to the video. Guys, good night, I go faint in the bed. See you for the second part. Bye!